You're listening to MMA Oddsbreaker. I'm Frank Trigg. This week, we're talking to Mo Lawal, who is in, where are you, Florida right now, training down at ATT? Is that where you are? Yeah, yeah, I'm out here in Florida. How is it? Uh, well, you were at Mayweather's camp and spent most of your time in Las Vegas. Um, now you're down at, down at, uh, um, uh, down in Florida training. Are you, you're at ATT now. It seems like you're kind of yeah. bouncing around different camps. Is there a reason why you're doing that, or is it just... The, the, well, the reason I got was, you know, the guy, I've been coaching the American top team for years. I got the Western coach here with my coach. And that's fact, you might, you might have seen him, but he came from, I met him in Oklahoma. He was probably took his main training partner from, from uh, his Iranian, but he was in Germany. Yep. And he was trained with Byron Tucker in 2000, and uh, I've been cool with him ever since I first met him through Byron Tucker. So we became close, and then uh, he, I got him, he was coach of Oklahoma State, and then one day Pitbull and JD called me, and I'm like, hey, we need a good wrestling coach out here, because I think Gerald Golan left, or something like that. Oh, okay. So I said, hey, I got guys, I got a good guy, my brother Cammy. So I, yeah. I basically came out there, and Cammy been there since um, Pitbull fought uh, Matt Hughes and, and, uh, and uh, um, Koscheck. He's out here for that long. Wow. Jeez, okay. Yeah. So you you got a good home then down there. Are you still spending most of your time though living in, in Vegas and, and going back and forth for your train camps, or are you moving yourself permanently down to Florida now? Oh, I'm probably gonna go back and forth. I'm probably gonna do most of my camps. Uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna see. I wanna see how this goes. I feel good out here. I like it out here. I got Trent Glover, Tracy Mako, get get a get get licks in. So uh, you know, um, I got Jeff out here right now. Jeff like Jeff came out here for a week. Oh, so, wow. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to be doing some training in Vegas and come back to camps or whatever. I just swing down and make a top team. Uh, if guys need me, I come to – because I, I, would, I wouldn't mind training with Glover a little more because we, we go at it. You know, he's a big, tough dude, man. And, you know, I have fun training with him. I, I you know, I'd be a challenge, you know what I'm saying? And it's fun. Well, you're, you're getting ready to fight uh, Mikhail Zatias in, uh, uh, in Bellator. And he's more of a submission guy. He's only, I was 22 wins. He's only got four KOs and 12 submissions and, and a bunch of decisions. So he obviously can go late in the late rounds. But, but the yeah. question still remains, you tend to try to use your boxing a little bit more than you should and not so much of your wrestling to stay inside. And, but with a guy like Mikhail, it's, it's going to be mainly wrestling. He's going to try to wrestle you to get you to the ground so he can try to slack a submission on you and you're going to have to defend. Have you been spending a lot of time on, your, on just pure wrestling again? And, and if so, what kind of adaptive changes have you made? You know, I, I, I was, you know, we have wrestling practice here, wrestling with uh, Glover, my boy Bookie, um, Muhammad Abdul Fatah, you know, Greco Roman, our world champion, Steve Mako. They got guys here I wrestle with. But I just, pretty much, you know, I do wrestling, jiu jitsu, MMA, you know what I'm saying? And uh, with science, you know, I'm not really concerned because the message he got, he, he gets to some good, top, solid, dominant positions. He doesn't really get him from off his back. He gets him off of like, getting a takedown. And I'm not worried about him taking me down to the Sambo guy. You know, I'm not worried about him getting taken, him shooting on me. Cause she's on the sprawl, you know. I'm yeah. not worried about any of that stuff because I still train on wrestling. That's good because I know a lot of wrestlers I've been talking to have not made that that de the decision to stay as a wrestler. They're still trying to be boxers because they figure if you can't take me down, I can knock you out, and, and well, it doesn't it, happen it, all the time. It's, it's, it's part of entertainment because you know if, if you're you know you can remember like in wrestling, which is a true sport, it could be a one zero match, three zero match, and guess what? You won three zero. Yeah. The MMA, it's it, it, decision, decision, decision. People are like, you know what? This guy's born. I don't like him. His ratings killer. You know, we don't want to watch him fight. Uh, you know, and that, that's, so you have to get to kind of a balance. It's be somewhat entertaining in your wins. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's yep. why it's, it's, more, it's more entertaining. It's not just sport. In football, you know, you win the game is 3 0. Oh, man, it's a great defensive game. You know, the, the field goal he kicked, you know, blah, blah. You almost scored a touchdown, but he didn't. Basketball, it comes down to the last second. Baseball, same thing. But MMA, you, you, you beat somebody three rounds, nothing. That's like, oh, I always get something. The guy's boring, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. All right. Well, you know, you had that rematch with Emmanuel Newton your last time out in, in Beltor 106. You lost the decision. Uh, yeah. You lost Emmanuel back in, in February, February of 2013. And you had a two, you know, you beat Seth Pizzelli up so bad he retired. You beat up Jacob No, and then, and then lost it to Emmanuel. What happened during the during the rematch? I mean, obviously, the first time you got caught and you got knocked out. And it, was, it was a fluke. Well, the, the rematch, you know, I'm not going to lie. I thought he was going to win. I, I really like hit me with anything. He hit me with my neck in the second round. But that was like the last, like, 45 seconds of the second round. I was now winning the round. They want to do it to him. Okay, so it was 1-1. Third round, I give him that round. That's really happy. He just pushed hit me. Fourth and fifth round, I got my takedowns. I landed the bigger shots. 
You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I guess they just like his sidekicks. I had no idea because I had not one scratch, one bruise, one. I was my lip was bleeding. I had him cut up, busted up, everything. You know, but I don't know. I don't look for it. You know, um, he had to go. I was controlling the fight because now the thing about this, when people look at, um, when people compare, when people talk about, um, Gil Melendez, not Gil Melendez, but uh, Punk, Josh Thompson versus uh, um, what's that guy's name? Um, um, Ben Henderson. I didn't watch the fight, but they were like, well, you know, the kids out either way, but they gave Ben Henderson a fight because the aggressive he came forward and he thought there's a fight. Well. Then, then you look at other fights where people you say, well, he came forward, but he was landing. What are you looking for? You know, I I came forward on landing at the takedown. I I I put the action. I, I got the you know I did the damage. You know what I'm saying? But what are you looking for in the fights? I I really don't know what they're looking for. To be honest with you, you know that's what's almost safe to stop stop them. You know what I'm saying? Get the finish, but you know I didn't get it, and if they gave me the decision, you know I it's whatever. Yeah, that, that's just how it goes. And that's sometimes, you know, you can't let it go to the judges because the judges are going to screw you, just like you said. Even if you take a guy down and hold him down and beat him up, you, the judges can still screw you and say that you lost the fight. So even using wrestling as your advantage, you still have to find a way to, to, to finish. Yeah, yeah. Macau's going to be a tough guy for you to finish uh, just because of, of the way that he fights and the way he battles, but he is finishable. Yeah. He is a guy that will, yeah, yeah. that will eventually get caught. You can cut him. You've got strong elbows and good punching. You can knock him out. If you had to choose, which way do you think is going to be the, the better way, the best way for you to kind of catch him? Is it going to be a boxing match you know, where you take him down and beat him up that way, or are you going to end up having to cut him, or do you think you're going to catch him with a submission? Like, what do you think is the best way to, to beat Mikhail like, for a finish before the, before the final bell? I got to pressure him. I got to take down him. I got to keep, the, keep my hands in his face. Um, I just got to pressure him. I got to keep him going back. I got to put the pressure on him. I can't let him like get in the groove and do all that with that he does with, with the lead hand and you know, I just got I got a big fight going back. I got pressure him, touch his body, take him down. You know, punish him, smother him. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be like a grind. I have to wrestle him like a wrestle, like a creature wrestling match. I got to fight him like a in a creature wrestling match. Feel like that, grind him out. Cause that's the best way to beat the Russians. Okay, yeah, and I and I agree that that's it's the same way as when we used to battle him in wrestling. That we just got you got to stay yeah, on him, keep the pressure up. on him, keep the grind. Yeah. They got great technique. Great fortitude, but if you keep the pressure on him, they tend to fall apart. I do believe that's the same yeah. thing that's going to happen with, uh, with Ohio. It's going to, he's going to fall apart at the end of it. It's just not going to happen for him yeah. when it comes through. So what's, what's it like for your, for your Tate uh, down there in Florida? Uh, it's, a, it's a Thursday. What was training like today down there? Um, today I, came, I went hit mitts um, this morning, and I went back at Spar to hit some more mitts. Um, you know, it's just weird. Monday's a hard wrestling practice, two hours wrestling practice. It's like a collegiate match, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I do like some freestyle stuff, like, you know, take down and just back your feet. Sometimes I take him down, submit him. Sometimes I take him down, ride him. You know, it's, it's weird, man. You know, um, it's either collegiate or freestyle. The other day, we did some just Greco, because my boy Bookie was in town, you know, but um, he was a 2006 world champion. He was in town. So um, he, we did Greco, some Greco. So, you know, he's going to start training the American top team as far as like just doing his MMA training just to, you know, just conditioning and then go to Europe and train for, um, for worlds, for his Greco, for Greco. So, you know, he's a good body for people to use. And Steve Mako's here. And, you know, it's, 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 man, it's, it's a bunch of good, good guys here that you can get good work from. Well, it sounds like you're having a good time down there, Mo. I appreciate you coming on here with MMA Oddsbreaker. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup. I can't wait to see the, the action start again. And, and of course, as always, I like Bellator. Because it's every it's every Friday night. It goes off. You can get used to to a season uh, of watching it, and it's gonna be good to have you back in there again. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. You got it, buddy. We'll talk to you soon, Mo. Have a good rest of the training camp, bud. All right, man. Appreciate it.